welcome back everyone uh, in this lecture we will continue with the the definition of sign map so like i promised uh, uh, we will actually uh, go through the proof of uh, the different definition of sign map so let us uh, first recall uh, what we did in the earlier class so we introduced this delta so which was motivated from this vandermann matrix so this delta is a multivariate polynomial which is given to be the product x i minus x j when 1 less than or equal to i less than j less than or equal to n. So, this this multiple of all these monomials. So, so given this n, we fix uh, these uh, commuting variables x1, etc, xn. So, using them you define this delta. So, these are commuting variables. So, we wanted to use this delta in order to define this sign map. So, for that purpose for given sigma coming from Sn we define what is called the sigma of delta. So, sigma of delta obtained from delta by permuting the variables xi with respect to sigma. So, this is by definition you take again the product take x sigma of i minus x sigma of j. Okay? So, where 1 less than or equal to i less than j less than or equal to n. Okay? So, if you think about it, uh, so if you work with the Van Damman matrix, so basically all you do is you, you actually uh, permute the columns of the Van Damman matrix with respect to the given sigma, then if you take the determinant of that, you get exactly this, this polynomial. Okay? But one can actually, like I said, one does not need to involve determinant directly one can work with the, the possible formula of the determinant and then we can define uh, the sign map without getting into the actual determinant. But in some sense the determinant properties are hidden in the definition of sign map. Anyway what we have observed, so we observed that this sigma of delta is given by minus 1 power uh, power this cardinality of a sigma times delta. So, where this a sigma is given to be those tuples i j coming from i n cross i n such that i is less than j but sigma of i is greater than sigma of j. So, you, you collect those tuples i j such that when you apply sigma the order is changed okay that is called the set of inversions that is associated with the sigma then the cardinality of that a sigma is involved in this uh, sigma of delta so it's a basically sigma of delta up to a sign is exactly delta the sign is determined by this parity of this uh, cardinality of a sigma so now uh, what do we want to climb so as i promised earlier the, our climb is the sign map that we already know. So, that is going to be exactly minus 1 power the, the cardinality of the sigma. So, whatever the sign that picks up by applying the sigma on delta, that is the sign you get for the sign of sigma. So, that is what we want to climb. Of course, how one can prove such statement? So, we can, we can use the group homomorphism property of the sign map. So, recall that the sign map is indeed uh, uh, group homomorphism. So, in particularly what is there on the right hand side you have to prove it is a group homomorphism. So, define the following map epsilon which is from this Sn2 plus or minus 1. So, how it is defined? So, basically epsilon of sub sigma is going to be plus 1 if sigma of delta is delta. It is minus 1 if sigma of delta is minus delta. So, basically from our formula you can see that epsilon of sigma is nothing but the minus 1 power cardinality of a sigma. Okay? So, this is your sigma. So, our first aim is we need to prove, okay? we need to prove directly that epsilon is a group homomorphism. Okay? So, once we prove it is a group homomorphism, so then step 2 will be, so this is going to be step 1. So, step 2 will be if you verify that epsilon of 
any transposition i j or even we have already proved that i i plus 1 this adjacent transpositions or simple transposition they also generate the symmetric group s n. So, if you take uh, this uh, adjacent transposition i i plus 1 and if you verify that epsilon of that i i plus 1 is same as sin of i i plus 1 which is minus 1 for all i less than or equal to n minus 1 less than or equal to 1 then these two facts together will imply that epsilon is same as sin map ok. So, we need to check those these two facts. So, let us check one by one and then we can actually uh, verify epsilon is same as sin map. First of all we will verify actually step 2 which is easy to verify. So, let us uh, see that what this uh, sigma equal to i i plus 1 does. If you take sigma equal to i i plus 1 then if you apply delta uh, sigma to delta then you can see that you just keep all the products ok product x r minus x s where r is less than s less than or equal to 1 greater than or equal to 1 ok. So, then this the tuple r s should not be i i plus 1 that is all ok. All these products will stay as it is because nothing changes because sigma only disturbs i and i plus 1. So, then you can see that it just dis disturbs that i i plus 1 and it interchanges. So, it is going to give x i plus 1 minus x i ok. This is the only inversion that is possible. All other tuples stay as it is. So, then it says that uh, from this you can easily see that. So, when you write uh, this particular monomial in the correct order then this is going to be minus x i minus x i plus 1 and then if you club it with the this product. So, then you can get just minus 1 times delta ok. So, that means sigma of delta is exactly equal to minus delta, but we already know that this sin of i i plus 1 is just minus 1 because sin of i i plus 1 just switches that i row and j i plus 1 th, uh, row or i th column and i plus 1 th column in the identity matrix. So, you get by switching that determinant you get just minus 1 ok. So, so this we already know this part. So, now we verified these two are same. So, that means, so this is exactly implies that sig, sigma the sign of sigma is same as epsilon of sigma for sigma equal to i i plus 1 ok. So, that proves that step 2 is correct. So, now we need to verify that uh, epsilon is actually indeed group homomorphism. So, for that we need to actually check what uh, how it acts on delta. So, you see it is actually easy uh, thing to check. Suppose if you start with sigma and sigma dash from S n, then you want to see that how sigma sigma dash as a permutation act on delta. So, then you can easily see that. So, then as a permutation this is going to act like. So, you just it is going to permute sigma sigma dash ok. So, it is the composition is going to permute. So, but what it is? It is basically it is a product x sigma composition sigma dash applied on i minus x sigma composition sigma dash applied on j where i and j just varies from 1 to n such that i less than j. So, now what it what is this just look at this particular monomial ok just write it out. So, this is x sigma sigma dash of i minus x sigma sigma dash of j ok. So, if you think about it, so this is obtained from two steps. So, first what we can do? So, we can just up you can start with x i minus x j and then you can apply sigma first then you will get x sigma of i minus x sigma of j. So, then you apply sigma dash sorry first you apply sigma dash 
so then you apply sigma so then you can see that by applying like this from two steps you get this this polynomial okay from starting with this particular monomial first to apply sigma dash then you apply sigma then you get this monomial so that means what it says so basically up sigma sigma dash of delta can be obtained by first apply you sigma dash to delta so then you apply sigma to that sigma dash of delta but you already know that what is sigma dash of delta sigma dash of delta is going to be that uh, epsilon sigma dash delta similarly if you apply sigma of sigma dash of delta then you can see that this epsilon sigma dash is constant so so we are only permuting the variables so this is going to just pop out so then it is going to give you sigma of delta so then you can see that from this it is just epsilon sigma dash so sigma delta can be replaced by epsilon sigma delta so basically what it says this says that sigma sigma dash delta is nothing but epsilon sigma dash times epsilon sigma delta so this is what we get but from the definition you can see that sigma sigma dash delta is nothing but epsilon sigma sigma dash delta okay combining this star and double star from star and double star we can see that epsilon sigma sigma dash is same as epsilon sigma times epsilon sigma dash so that means this epsilon is indeed group homomorphism okay and this is true for all sigma sigma dash in sn so that proves that this epsilon is indeed group homomorphism so now if you start with any sigma then what you can do so for any sigma in sn so then you can write this sigma as some product of tau 1 etc tau r where this tau k they are all coming from these simple transpositions i i plus 1 okay so then by looking at this epsilon sigma you can see that this is going to be exactly epsilon tau 1 etc epsilon tau r which is going to be minus 1 power r but if you apply sign map sign of sigma is going to be again sign of tau 1 etc sign of tau r so that is again going to be minus 1 power r so from this you can see that epsilon sigma is same as sign of sigma for all sigma in s so that means indeed the two definition of the sign map they coincide so one is given by straight away determinant of this permutation matrix so another one is implicitly given by this delta again uh, in the literature like if you see some other books okay again they use some other way of uh, defining this sign map again implicitly that uses the properties of determinant okay for example some of the books uses uh, this particular uh, uh, let us call it uh, xi okay so which is just a product of just integers take i minus j where 1 less than or equal to i less than j less than or equal to n okay then you can apply sigma on xi by just taking product sigma of i minus sigma of j then you vary over again i less than j less than or equal to n so then if you are interested in capturing the sign okay you can take it as exercise then the sign of sigma is going to be sigma of psi divided by psi again you can change the order if you want not a problem you can actually but anyway so this this just works but if you think about it again this term again can be okay realized as determinant of something okay again you are playing with the determinant only okay so this actually uh, 
introduces uh, sign map in many different ways. Okay, so now uh, you can see that uh, if you take, for example, uh, this uh, from this uh, we can get this immediate corollary from what we have observed. So we also have this different expression of this uh, sign of sigma, which is given by this number of involution, which is exactly minus one power the cardinality of a sigma. Okay. Maybe it is actually a good exercise uh, to do that uh, when you take the composition of two permutations sigma sigma dash then how this uh, the cardinality of a sigma sigma dash related to the cardinality of a sigma and cardinality of a sigma dash. Okay. But uh, as an immediate corollary one can immediately get if you take cardinality of a sigma sigma dash. So, this is going to be congruent to the cardinality of a sigma plus cardinality of a sigma dash modulo 2. Okay. So, up to the multiple of 2 then they are same actually. So, this is immediate corollary because epsilon is a group home also. So, this is something one can directly try to check using the definition of a sigma. I will I will leave it to you to check. Okay. So, now if you think about it, if so, if you are interested in uh, finding out, okay, so epsilon of any any transposition ij without computing, okay, uh, this uh, how the ij act on this capital delta, okay. So, what one can do? One can use this property of uh, this epsilon. It is a group homomorphism, and any transposition is all the once the cycle types are same, they are all conjugate. So, that means any two transpositions are conjugate using that information you can immediately calculate this is exactly minus 1. So, how one can do for example, you take 1 2. Okay. So, 1 2 and ij they are both transpositions. So, that means there will be some tau such that tau 1 2 tau inverse is going to be ij. So, this is something we have already seen if two permutations they have same cycle type they must be conjugate. So, any two transpositions are conjugate. In particularly, if you compute epsilon of ij, so this is going to be epsilon of tau, epsilon of 1, 2 and epsilon of tau inverse. But tau is being uh, sorry epsilon being group homomorphism and uh, it is happening inside plus or minus 1 that is a commutative group. So, that means this is going to be exactly equal to epsilon of 1, 2. But epsilon of 1, 2 we already know it is minus 1. Okay. So, this is another way of computing okay, what is epsilon of ij. But I, I, I urge you to just use the definition directly. Okay. So, you compute how this ij act on delta and then you see you try to prove it is exactly minus delta. So, this is uh, some interesting exercise that you can do directly. Okay. So, now from this uh, you can easily define uh, what is called uh, this even permutation and odd permutation. So, based on this epsilon, okay. of course, epsilon sigma is 1. So, then we call this uh, sigma is even permutation and epsilon sigma is minus 1. So, then we call sigma is odd permutation. So, now from this you can make a table like in the over integers. Okay. So, E1 times E1 you can easily see that that must be E1 and odd times odd that is also going to be E1. If you take odd times E1, so that is going to be odd which is again E1 times Okay, the product of two even permutation must be even, and product of two odd permutation must be even, and if you mix this odd and even, then that must be odd always. Okay, this is something uh, trivial to check. So now, if you take a m cycle, okay, if you take this m cycle, so let's call it sigma a one, etc. A m. So, then you can see that uh, 
So, this uh, sin of this sigma, so this is going to be exactly minus 1 power m plus 1, okay. So, because uh, if an m equal to 2, then the sin of this a b is minus 1, okay, that is what we have observed. When you take 3 cycle, we just observe that. So, a b c if you take, so then we wrote it as a c a b, okay. So, then the sign of this is minus 1 square which is plus 1. So, that means this is all lie in a n. Now, how one can check this? So, you write this sigma this a1 etc am as product of uh, transposition then it is a1 am and then a1 am minus 1 and so on then a1 a3 and a1 a2. So, this is your cycle a1 etc am. For example, one can check easily. So, a1 goes to a2, a2 are all fixed in this. So, that means it is just uh, a1 goes to a2. Similarly, a2 goes to a1, a1 goes to a3 and a3 is fixed in all this. So, a2 goes to a3 and so on, okay. So, now from this you can easily see that the sign of this a1 etc am is going to be minus 1 power m minus 1. There are only, so it starts with 2 ends with m, m. so it, there are m minus 1 terms. So, this is minus 1 power m minus 1 which you want to just parity wise add then it will become minus 1 power m plus 1, okay. So, that is your sign of this cycle a1 etc. So, in many places uh, this sign map uh, very explicitly used. For example, if you have uh, the, the, the determinant formula for given any n by n matrix, okay, that is the place where it is very much used, okay. If you start with a matrix A, so which you call it uh, Aij, which is n by n matrix, let us say this is there in some m n over a field f, okay. So, f is a field. For example, you can take it to be complex numbers, real numbers or even rational numbers, okay. It is just any field. So, then we, we are able to do this multiplication divisions and so on uh, over this f, okay. So, now we have this very explicit formula of determinant, okay. So, the determinant can be defined in many ways, okay. So, it is a alternating function satisfying some properties, but anyway. So, I am going to just write down very explicit formula using this sign map, okay. So, that is all I am going to do. So, the determinant of this A is given very explicitly sum over all sigma in S n and then you take this sign of sigma. So, then you take this product of A 1 sigma 1 and so on A n sigma n, okay. So, this is the formula for determinant using the symmetric group action and uh, the sign map. So, what is this, how this sigma act on this a i j? You can see that it naturally act on this indices 1 to n. So, you basically take the corresponding uh, numbers here, okay, a 1 sigma 1 and so on a n sigma phi. When sigma is identity, then you get exactly the diagonal product, okay. When sigma is non identity, you can already see that. So, so, there will be some tuple i j such as that i not equal to j, okay. For example, let us write down this for n equal to 3. So, you can try to verify this is the formula that you, you must have seen in your uh, uh, high school, okay. The determinant of this a, so when a is just uh, a 1 1, a 1 2, a 1 3, a 2 2, a 2 sorry a 2 1, a 2 1, a 2 2, a 2 3, a 3 1, a 3 2, a 3 3. So, then the determinant is given by, 
So, you, how many terms you have in S3? So, S3 the cardinal t is 3 factorial, it is exactly 6. Okay. So, you can write down S3 very explicitly. So, this is going to be identity and then the transposition 1, 3, 1, 2, 1, 3 and uh, 2, 3. So, 3 transpositions are there. So, then you have the product of them. So, you will have the 3 cycle 1, 2, 3 and then I guess it is 1, 3, 1, 3, 2. Okay. So, let us check. So, if you take the product 1, 2, 1, 3. So, that is going to be so 1, 2, 3. So, 1 goes to 3, 3 goes to 3, 2 goes to 2, 2 goes to 1. So, 3 goes to 1, 1 goes to 2. So, this is exactly 1, 3, 2. Okay. So, this is the product. So, which is equal to this. Similarly, if you take 1, 2, 2, 3. So, this is going to be 1, 2, 3. So, let us check. So, this is 1, 2, 3. So, 2 goes to 3, 3 goes to 3, 3 goes to sorry, 1 goes to 1, 1 goes to 1, 1 goes to 2, 2 goes to 3, 3 goes to 3, uh, 3 goes to 2, 2 goes to 1. So, this is going to be 1, 2, 3. Okay. So, there are, these are all the 6 terms. So, it is clearly all the 6 terms. So, then you can see that you can write down. So, the sign will be what? The sign will be. So, this is uh, this is going to be plus and this is minus, this is minus, this is minus and this is uh, plus and this is plus. So, there are 3 plus terms and 3 minus terms. So, then if you write it down. So, the for the identity it will be A11, A, A22, A33 and then minus. So, now you have to see where this 1, 2 does. So, it is A1 sigma of 1 is 2, A12 and then A2 sigma of 2 is 1, A21 and then A3 sigma of 3 is 3. Then minus, so you can see that A1, so this 1 goes to 3 and then A2, 2 goes to 2 and then A3, 3 goes to 1. Then minus a one goes to one, a two two goes to three, a three goes to two, and then plus similarly, so one two three. Okay, so a one goes to two, a two goes to three, and then a three goes to one. Plus a one one goes to three, a two two goes to one a 3 3 goes to 2. So, these are the terms. So, you can cross check. Okay. So, this is what you get using this standard uh, 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 formula for the determinant. For example, you can cross check like this. Okay. This is a 1 1 a 1 2 a 1 3 and then a 2 1 a 2 2 a 2 3 and then a 3 1 a 3 2 a 3 3. So, when you take determinant of this, then you have this expansion using cofactors, then you get this exactly. So, you put plus minus plus here. So, this is a 1 1, then a 2 2 uh, times a 3 3 minus a 3 2 a 2 3. Okay. Then minus a 1 2. So, you cross this, then you a 2 1 a 3 3 minus a 2 3 a 3 1 then plus a 1 3 and then you can see that this is a 2. So, you have to cross this. So, a 2 1 a 3 2 minus a 2 2 a 3 1. So, let us check only one or two terms. So, it is clear that the very first term that is a 1 1 a 2 2 a 3 3 it is there. So, that is this term and then let us check the second term. So, a 1 1 a 3 2 a 2 3. So, a 1 1 a 3 2 a 2 3. So, this is this second term 2 3 3 2 okay, with the minus sign. 
so that is matching. Similarly, you can see that A122133, A122133 with the minus term, so this is here. A one two 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 three three. So this is this is there, and now let's take one two two three three one, one two two three three one with the plus sign. Okay, so that is also matching. So now I will leave it to you to check. This also appears as extracted. So this actually kind of gives very explicit formula. Okay, for the determinant using the symmetric group action on the AIJs and with the sign map. So this is, uh, I would say, very first in instance that you see uh, the power of okay uh, the sign map as well as uh, the action of SN on the indices. Okay, so and one can get such useful formulas uh, very explicitly. Okay, so I will stop here and then uh, we will continue with. Uh, some automosome of groups uh, in the next class. Thank you. I will stop here.